Hey there, John Shorby here from ReallyEasyGuitarLessons.com and in this video lesson I'm going to show you how to play a really easy strummy version of Viva La Vida by Coldplay. So Coldplay is one of my favorite bands. I think they write fantastic pop songs. Um, and this is a cool song because there's no guitar really in it on the recorded version. Uh, it's just, you know, violins and drums and vocals and cool sounding stuff. And so what we're going to do here is I have the isolated vocal performance um, and I'm going to show you how to play the chord progression of the song on an acoustic guitar in a very campfire, really easy strummy version. So very easy if you're on the newer side of things. There's only four chords in the song. There's only one chord progression. There's only one strumming pattern. This is a great one to add to your set list. So let's jump in and get going. All right. So first things first, capo on the first fret of this one. So if you don't have a capo, got to get a capo, put it on the first fret in order to be in the right key. Chords that we're going to use. We've got C, third fret A, and then when I say third fret, it's relative to the capo. So third fret A, second fret D, open G, first fret B, open E, C, and then D, open D, second fret G, third fret B, second fret E, G, third fret E, second fret A, open D, open G, third fret B, third fret E. And then E minor, open E, second fret A, second fret D, open G, open B, open E. E minor, four chords, C, D, G, and E minor, okay? And if we organize them into a chord progression, it's one repeating pattern for the whole song. It's gonna be a split measure of C to D, right? So that it's C for pretty much the whole measure. You're just gonna change to D on the and of four, and then that chord is gonna sustain over to the next measure for four beats. So we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And then we change to G on the next beat one, one and two and three and four, and on the and of four, Go to E minor, and then that sustains over for four whole beats. So the whole thing is one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. All right, so that's gonna be the whole chord progression in terms of what your your hand, left hand is doing. Right hand. Strumming pattern to do here, I, I would do this. I would go, it, it's really a two measure strumming pattern just because that chord change happens on the end of four, you have to alter the second measure. So it's gonna be like this. It's gonna go down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up. And if I convert that into to rhythm counting, right, it'd be, one, two, three, and four, and, and two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and, and two, three, and four, and. So whether you use downstrokes and upstrokes, or you say one, twos, and ands, and threes, and stuff like that, I like to just use caveman sound. Da, 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 ka, da, ka, da, 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 ka, da, ka, da, 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 ka, da, ka, da, 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 ka, da, ka that always just feels more comfortable to me and to a lot of students. But if you're on the newer side and you just need to program your hands, whatever instructions you need to give your hands to get the job done, whether it's caveman sounds, counting, or instruction in terms of downs and upstrums. So yeah, if you're on the newer side of things, some of these chord changes could be tricky, right? C to D is a little, little tricky, or D to G could be tricky. G to E minor is actually pretty easy, but E minor back to C, could give you some problems. So if you find that you it takes a long time to go from chord to chord, that's the signal that you need to practice that change in isolation and get better at that chord change. So when you're adding strumming to the mix, you could, you could kind of sync your hands up by, you know, what down strum or up strum is on a chord change. So if you're your right hand, one, two, three, and four, and, that last and is when you should change to the D chord. And then on the next one, on a down strum, you change to the G. And on that and, you change to the E minor, which is an up strum.
I'm gonna play along with the isolated vocal. I'm gonna do, I don't know, maybe an, an intro up to the first chorus or third verse, let's see. Uh, it's not that complicated. It's the same chord progression for the entire song. So with like all really easy strumming versions of songs, process is make sure you know your chords first. If you don't know what a C, G, D, or E minor is, you got to start there. And if you have trouble changing between any of those, I'd highly recommend you spend a good amount of time practicing just the chord changes. It's the number one skill that holds beginners back from learning hundreds of songs. Practice your chord changes a lot in isolation. And of course, when you're adding strumming to everything, make sure that your sync is good. If you're noticing that there are long gaps between your chord changes, that is the signal that you need to focus more on your chord changes. Chord changes, chord changes, chord changes. You can't practice them enough. It's the most important thing that you have to focus on. Play this by yourself to your own internal timing, completely fine, but if you wanna work on your rhythm and your, and your timing, you wanna do this to a metronome or play it along to the song to help develop your internal sense of time and being able to play with other people. Totally fine if you wanna just jam on this by yourself, but if you wanna work on your timing and your rhythm, then I highly recommend either doing this to a metronome or playing along to the song or playing along to a backing track. You wanna just play to an external source of time so that you develop your sense of time and your rhythm. All right, that's it for this video lesson. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.